Christmas, a time for greetings. Up and down Britain, millions of cards, thousands of letters, hundreds of parcels reach their destinations on time. And as postmen relax today for the first time in weeks, let's recall how some of the mail got there. Not city mail, but mail for out-of-the-way places, like this radio station on a cliff top at Hollyhead. Here the postman was also Santa Claus, for it was to be a Christmas on duty for the wireless operators who keep Anglesey and Britain in touch with the Isle of Man. And right across Britain on the east coast, the postman had his problems too. For here on the Northumberland coast, the postman must also be something of an old salt, able to choose the tides that will allow him and his car to cross the sands to Holy Island. Holy Island, often known as the cradle of Christianity in England, is linked with the mainland for only four hours a day. During that time, driver John Mole must navigate his ancient and somewhat rusty car from near Berwick-on-Tweed to the tiny post office on the island. And there, the Christmas mail was taken over by Mrs. Louisa Kyle, who is both postmistress and postwoman. The castle that dominates Holy Island is the most out-of-the-way point in Mrs. Kyle's round. To deliver her letters to this fortress of four centuries ago, she must climb nearly 200 feet. Thanks to Mrs. Kyle, the castle's lone inhabitants, Mr. and Mrs. Lilburn, receive their Christmas greetings. And there's no extra charge for a rather special delivery. Special too is the postman in the Scottish Highlands. Take the Corrihalley route, north of Inverness. Here, Tommy the horse carries the mail for Jimmy Grant, the postman. Twice a week, Christmas or not, the six-footed postman completes 27 miles on a round that calls at only two houses. And by bringing Christmas mail to Farmer MacDonald and his neighbour ten miles away, Mr Grant is a postman in a million. For in addition to his pay, he receives a weekly allowance of 25 shillings for Tommy. Further south in the Highlands, Christmas deliveries took to the water. On Loch Afric in Inverness, a postal run normally used only in the summer was brought back again just for Christmas week. It was up to postman turned boatman Duncan McLennan to get the mail through. Ahead of him lay a four mile long trip to the other end of the loch. It took him through some of the most beautiful scenery in Scotland, all of it designated as a national park. the recipient of Mr. McLennan's special delivery was another McLennan, Donald. He lives at this eastern end of the loch, an area that during the winter is often completely cut off. Waterborne too, with his Christmas deliveries, was a postman south of the border. He was Bill Mortram, whose round took him from Welney in Cambridgeshire through Fenland. Usually it's a dry land route, but last week was just one of the many occasions when Mr. Mortram took to a boat on the Bedford River. That way he could get his Christmas mail delivered in almost half the time. the floating postman of the Fens completed his Christmas round, another postman was making his deliveries to those afloat further north. He was John Mulley, one of Britain's few regular river postmen. 
For 36 years, he has taken the mail around South Shields Harbour, calling on all ships that dock on Tyneside. Included in his round last week was the crew of a Canadian timber ship. To them, Mr. Mulley was the Christmas link with home. Back to the west coast, the coast of Wales, for the last item in this roundup of the Christmas post in remote places. The address is South Sack Lighthouse, and from there the men of Trinity House watch over the shipping off this wild west coast. Up to the last wall, the Hollyhead postman made a weekly call at the lighthouse, climbing down 402 steps to get there. But today the mail is delivered by the Trinity House men themselves, and the journey hasn't shortened. It's still 402 steps. With the post for South Stack last week, there also came relief. The changeover meant Christmas ashore for one, Christmas at sea for the others. And with the mail having got through, it became a belated Christmas of rest for postmen all over the country. Mm -hmm.